You look lost. Oh, you're looking for somewhere to sit. Well, you have come at a busy time, but lucky for you, the seat is free. Sit down then. Of course. Let me put that down. What are you having? Boiled lentis. Bold choice. I'm having the wheat porridge and I have to say it is not to my taste at all. Look at this. Simply horrid. But where are my manners? I forgot to introduce myself. My birth name is Isolt. And you are enchanted to meet you. Oh, sorry. I did not mean to stare. It's just that. You don't uh, look like you're a citizen of Esgate either. Mm, where are you from? Erwich Village, Erwich Village, Erwich Village. It doesn't ring a bell. Is it near Esgate by any chance? Really? So it's by. West Coast, up Ilian. That is quite far from here. But did you come here by horse? Ilian is so far from here. What? You asked a merchant if he could jump on his carriage. Well, that is an ingenious idea indeed. I wish I had thought of that myself actually. I had to ride an uncomfortable palfrey for days. Um, it was really awful. Disgusting. Though it is quite shameful to admit, I have never even been to Ilian, city of markets. Poor traveler I must make. I myself come from Dafford tiny ward located near the shadowy swamps, if you know where that is. Well, yes, Castleboro is vast indeed, but this is my first time in Escade actually. All I know from this city is from what others have told me, but you know, the full chalice is known to be a melting Adventurers, travelers, nobles, and commoners alike. Everyone here is welcome and everyone enjoy themselves. So I believe we have come to the right place, my friend. Now let's enjoy our food. Or at least try to, because this is not <laughs> to my liking at all. Do you want some? See, I told you. It's horrid. And you think I paid three coppers for it? Can you believe it? This is madness. You would not see this in Dufford. No, never. Actually, I believe that as a newcomer, you would have your first meal for free in any inn. But what brings you to escape? You are on your way to the Citadel. Well, well, I've heard that the Citadel of Mira is the most enticing city of all Castleborough. So big, but, you know, wouldn't it be a little bit overwhelming for villagers like ourselves to be venturing in such a big city? I wonder. I oh, know I've never been either. I just heard. And why do you wish to go to the Citadel? Uh, to become a Crimson Knight. <laughs> that is bold of you. A Crimson Knight. Well, the gods know we 
need more nights in these troubled times um, so that is why you're going to the citadel why do you want to join the order if that's not you in this great Fosigus mm. protects you I am so sorry well I had heard of the Selkie attacks at sea, but to think you lost your father to one of them, that is truly horrid. Well, it has become dangerous to be a sea merchant in these troubled times, but um, I'm still quite confused. I mean, we have been at peace with the Selkies for over 200 years. What could have triggered this sudden Chaos, these raids, so barbaric, does not make sense at all. Oh. Why suddenly? <coughs> Do you want a bit of ale? Oh, well, this is not exactly ale, but that's all I could afford. hear you correctly. You wish to avenge your father's death, and that is why you want to join the Crimson Knights. That would prove wise. I mean, once you are knighted, it is certainly possible that the Order will send you on a quest, uh, probably to Ilian, to help the merchants protect their ship. You will thus be able your father and go to war against the Selkies. I understand. Although, for that to happen, for you to be knighted by the king, you need a letter of introduction. You do have a letter, right? You are so sweetly naive. <laughs> Do you think that just anyone can have an audience with the King of Indata? Well, of course you need a letter of introduction. <laughs> Everyone does. <gasps> you need a letter of introduction from one of the lords or the ladies of Esgate. But it so happens that you are in luck. I I'm quite close to a chambermaid who used to live in Dafford as well. Since we are from the same ward, I am sure she will accept you. Help me if I ask nicely. Maybe she can put in a good word for you to the lady of Esgate, Lady Joyce, and well, Joyce of Esgate will gladly write you that letter of introduction. Do you know anything about Lady Joyce? Well, you are quite lucky you came to sit in front of me. All I know is from that chambermaid friend of mine. But do not fear, for she is deserving of our trust. Oh, no, 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 no. Tally is not a gossip at all. I know, I know that chamber maids are known to be uh, tattletales, but she only speaks the truth and does not find joy in the misery of others. So we can trust what she says. And all I know is from what she told me. Lady Joyce, uh, Joyce Eto, Eto is her family name, is a gorgeous, nice, and brave lady who recently became an orphan 
she lost her father, Lord of Asgate, for about 35 years, Lord Ito, a really good man, whom apparently fell from his horse during hunting, that's how he died. He was a good man, Lord Ito, and so is Lady Joyce. Well, I heard that she cares for the common people of Eskate. Fosikus, bless us. Her watch will last an age. As I was saying, As I was saying, you are in luck. It so happened. I am seeing Tally tonight. Yes. So, she might be able to sneak you in the Ito's house. <coughs> Too much pepper. <coughs> yes. So, you can take part of Lady Joy's hearing. And if she takes a liking in you, which I'm sure she will, because you have quite a sympathetic story. The letter of introduction should write itself. <laughs> oh well. I think it is a gorgeous plan. It will work out for sure. Uh, why am I still eating that? Why am I in escape? Well, I may not look like it, but I am a cleric. Traveling attire, so it's not easy to see, but I am, in fact, a cleric of Vosicus. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. Well, you see, as I told you, I come from Dafford, and there I used to work for the common temple. But as you know quite well, coming yourself from a small village, Erwich, right? Yes. Wards and villages are quite small and isolated for the rest from the rest of Castle Borough and I always wanted to serve a bigger purpose, I suppose. And I heard that the high priest of Vosicus in Axstone was uh, in need of help to perform his daily rituals. So I mastered all the courage I had and I left my family and my life to come to Axstone. But, as you know, a traveller needs rest, so I stopped for a few days in Eskate. Well, what greater purpose is there than to serve the forest god, mighty Rosicus? Well, yes, I mean, wanting to join the Order of the Crimson Knight is a noble cause too, I'm sure. You see, I was always attracted to the forest god. Ever since I was a girl. Well, I only went to Axton once, a long time ago. From the bell tower, you can see the Midlands Forest. Dark, mysterious, and full of secrets. You know, if it wasn't for the high priest of Osicus, the ghouls would have taken us already, a long time ago. Watching these trees upon the horizon, I just felt a true calling, you know. I mean, I've been a cleric since I was 12, so it is a true calling indeed. And while I know there hasn't been any attack in over a month, any ghoul cool attack, um, thanks to the high priest of Vosicus, and he is in need of help, so that's why I came. And I must admit, it is quite nice to leave my village and see the world. Why do you look so grim? Are you worrying, perhaps, about your letter of introduction? Well, do not worry. I will see Tally tonight, and I will speak of our affair. Yes, Lady Joyce will be more than happy to help you become what you desire. Don't worry. You have a sympathetic story. Like I said, you lost your father, she lost her father. I'm sure that she will understand that avenging your father is a right and just thing to do. Well, let me speak of our affair 
to my friend Tally. Actually, I will go right now. Maybe you will feel better. Yes. Okay. Uh, why don't we meet in the morrow? Are you staying at the inn? Well, that's perfect. It's settled. We will meet again tomorrow and we will go to the Edel house together. I will introduce you to Tally. Uh, you can have my wheat porridge if you want. I shan't have another spoon. sort of nonsense makes a man thirsty. Marjorie, Marge, Mug of Pitta, do you want anything to wash down your lentils? And the Mug of Whale, much appreciated. She's sweet. Anyway, my second point. First off, never seen her in Tafford. Secondly, she said something about being some sort of Fosicus priest. Is that right? Cleric, cleric. What's the difference anyway? <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. Because in Tafford, we don't pray to Fosicus. <laughs> we don't pray to the god of the forest. We pray to the swamp god. We need the shadowy swamps. No forest where I'm from, only swamps. And to each swamp, it's God. And sometimes, sometimes, yes, yeah, yeah. We will give a little prayer to good old Dendata, who made this kingdom bless his godly soul. But most of the time, I mean, we pray to the swamp gods. I've never heard of anyone praying to Fosikus. Nonsense. Why should we care about the god of the forest? That doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, liar, I'm telling you. She's a liar, she's a bloody liar. And who am I? Uh, well, I'm Ansel from the Guild of Peddlers. Glad to make your acquaintance. And you are. <laughs> Sorry, I already know you. Sort of heard the whole conversation before. So. And by the way, 
I heard about your old man being killed off by the Selkies. Bloody Selkies. I hate them. Well, yeah. <laughs> Bloody Selkies are not even a race. They're a beast. That's what they are. <laughs> no, they shouldn't even be called a race. They should be called, yeah, monsters or creatures. Just like the ghouls in the forest and the drakes in the mountains. Ugh. I'm disgusted by them, really. Is that ale coming? No matter. Let's just take my own. Something like that will make you forget about your misery. Trust me on that. Be careful, this is pretty strong. Well, let me tell you a funny one talking about the Selkies. But to tell this story, let me borrow Marjorie's candle. There you go. I was working to deliver some goods in Alien City of Markets. Well, you know Alien. It's near your village, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, which village? Yeah. Anyway, I stopped at the tavern with my good friend Danny to have a cold one and meet the ladies if you know what I mean a young girl approaches me can't see her face but I can tell she is old enough to spend some good time with me and Danny if you know what I mean <laughs> anyway she's all good funny enough drinks my you know, we're having good fun. But then, suddenly, my good mate, Danny, puts the candle to her face. Turns out, she was a bloody sulky. With a seal nose and big dumb eyes and everything. <laughs> Slapped her right in the face and left the tavern. <laughs> She's lucky I didn't burn that seal nose of hers with the bloody candle. How dare she approach me. She's not even human. She thinks she can seduce me and my mate. <laughs> You'll never see me. You know, getting it on with one of them. They're gross, disgusting, filthy. Hate them. But, you know. How long are we going to have to wait until the Selkies are thrown back into the sea where they belong? <laughs> Let me put that back because Marjorie's not. Anyhow, what I really want to tell you is, I understand you, mate. Those bloody selkies, they should be thrown back into the sea. They have no business on land. Not at all. Why were they even allowed here? No idea. <laughs> and that bloody king, the king, the king of Entata, King Persim, he's a bloody selkie lover. I'm telling you, not many people know that, but... I know for sure that the king lays in bed with the selkie females. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he fucks them. 100%. I don't understand the man. I mean, he has a beautiful wife, the queen, and even so, if he wants to fuck anyone in the whole kingdom, he can because he's the king, you know? But no, <laughs> he gets it on with the selkie females. Yeah, well, things were different back then, when his father was on the throne. It's not the same thing. Half the things that are allowed right now wouldn't have been, you know, the sulky they were. Now we, we treat them like humans, but they're not. They're not humans. But I hear you left your trade looking for a new career 
What do you say you join the pet list? Yeah, our guild could use strong arms and legs like yours, for sure. Let me see what you've got. Yeah, you're not too bad. You could do well, we could become your family, you know. Imagine the life of a peddler. Every day, waking up in a new city. You'd have good mates, and you'd earn your living doing an honest job. I mean, doesn't pay well, but pays your ale. That's all I'm asking if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you'd see some things. You'd see the word. <laughs> uh, the taverns in Wood Hollow and in Hayford. The girls in Wood Hollow, they're different than in the capital. Oh, well, less stuck up than in the Citadel, that's for sure, but everyone knows. The girls of Castle Borrow, they're the worst. They won't do anything. But up in Norden, they're so cold. They need a man to warm them up. You know what I mean. Everyone always knows what I mean. Yeah, I mean sex. But anyway. You'd see some nice things if you joined the pet list. Yeah. The lights of the citadel. The markets, Villian. The brothels of Eifert. And the northern mountain. The snow as far as the eye can see. Yeah, some nice things, I'm telling you. So what do you say? Want to join? Well, of course. There are some places rather not go, I mean, for example, that elf city up north, don't get me started on the elves, not as bad as the selkies, that's for sure, but I don't like them, I don't like them one bit, no, no, I don't like them, I hate them, uh, yeah, yeah, seems like you know me, you knew I, I didn't like the elves either, well, yeah, but you know, the worst of them all, Deaton, their lord up there is a halfling, half sulky, half human, Lord Chofa, his name is, can you believe it, I mean, if we're not careful, one day, bloody Selkies will be sitting at the council of four, or worse, we may even have a bloody selkie for a king one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to take our place. They, they want to, they want to kill us all. Remember that? Yeah. Anyway, I'm heading to the Citadel of Mira tomorrow to deliver some copper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this selkie raids are kind of making us some money after all, I mean, no trust in the sea anymore, so the Ministry of Finance is asking us to deliver the copper, so, you know, all in all, all in all, uh, it's kind of a good thing that the Selkies are attacking us, no offense to your dead dad, <laughs> yeah, they don't trust the sea merchants anymore, I mean, if they get attacked, no, anyway, you want to join me? Join the guild. Become a peddler. Yeah, well, it's a nice life, like I said. You know, brothels. Yeah, that's all I've got. Ale. That's, that's a given. No? Oh, that's right. You want to join the Crimsons. Yeah, yeah, the Crimson Knights. <laughs> that's a funny idea. Well, I'd rather become a bloody Fosikus priest than join the Crimson's. <laughs> if, if, if I had to join an order, I'd join maybe the Falcons. <laughs> maybe the Falcons, I mean, they hire all race, but that's the only wrong thing with them. I like the Falcons, but the Crimson's, no, 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 I'd never go there. <sighs> bloody Crimson's. 
they're pretty much useless i mean if they were doing their job <laughs> your dad wouldn't be dead would he <laughs> supposed to protect us and everything what are they doing wonder <laughs> but anyway i got you don't want to become a peddler it's not a life for everyone so well i better get going it's getting late and you know i'm heading to the brothel next door if you want to join me it's getting dark and wouldn't want to find myself kissing a selfie again <laughs> it's not funny yeah well it was nice meeting you maybe i'll see you at the citadel in a few days if you don't get lost because on your own it's gonna be pretty hard getting there you've got a horse you don't Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Crimson Knight. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you. I, I can totally see it. <laughs> Alright. See you around, mate. Hey there, new face. I saw you earlier talking to Ansel. Yeah, he's not all bad. Don't worry, he's all talk mostly. Well, yeah, you know, that guild is something special. Anyway, um, I noticed you ate quite a while ago. Are you hungry by any chance? Because we're closing, so this is your last opportunity to you know get something to eat before going to bed well mm, we have boiled lentils wheat porridge dried sausage and blue cheese oh. <laughs> I almost forgot I actually made this delicious cake chocolate cake with a lot of sugar on it so I mean, if you're interested, I could give you a slice. Yeah? Okay. Let me get it. This is the chocolate cake with a nice flower from the Inns Garden. So, how do you like it? Do you want it? It's only two coppers for one slice, obviously. Not for the whole cake, but I think that after this one, you'll be all set. Yeah? Alright, there you go. Now, do you want something to drink? I have bitter and I have ale, so it's up to you. Warm milk. <laughs> sure, I can get you that. Well, it's probably better considering you're going to bed now. Okay. Just... Give me your glass, and I'll pour you some warm milk. Sorry, I'm not making fun of you. It's just that, I guess it's a nice change. Because usually, people who come here at this hour of night, they're not here to drink warm milk, if you know what I mean. There you go. Anyway, we should lower our voice because it's getting quiet here you know it was not long ago that folk used to stay here until dawn yes late into the night but well now as soon as the sun sets they rush back home well i've been working here since i was a little girl by the way i'm marjorie I say that already? No, I don't think so. Sorry. I'm Marjorie. I'm the innkeeper. And yes, I've been working at this inn for, yeah, quite a few years now. And, uh, well, I hear a lot of things. Oh, yes. 
I hear a lot of things and some of them would make the toughest northern man shiver in his boots yeah <laughs> I swear but what are you doing here? I take it you're a newcomer because I've never seen you here and I know everyone in Escape everyone I mean it's not that large of a city Oh, you're going to see Lady Joyce. Well, the poor thing. She's been a complete mess since her dad passed away. Yes. Lord Eto died, yes. But between you and me, I heard that he was murdered. Yes, I heard he was killed. Well, they say that he died like he fell off his horse but I don't believe that no I heard a few squires talking about it and a chambermaid and a butler from the citadel yes they mentioned it too but you know with all the disruption caused by well the sulky raids no one think about asking the right question and I tried to bring it up a few times. I was like, hey, well, I think that Lord Edel was murdered. And, well, people just laughed at my face. They didn't believe me. They were like, oh, Lord Edel murdered? That doesn't make any sense. The man had no enemy. Who would want to kill Lord Edel? He was so good to us. I'm telling you, something's odd about all this and, you know, I have a sort of intuition for these sort of things yes, I can sense when something's not right mm. anyway, Lady Joyce is doing her best to, well, you know, keep Eskate in order but it's hard to be respected by lairds and lords especially when you're a woman and alone at that because she never married. Anyway. Oh. She's doing her best. The gods be good. Lady Joyce is gonna stay here for a long time. But you may not know that because you're not from here. The Etol family has been protecting Eskate for ages. Pretty much since the city was built. Yeah some serious history right there <laughs> well the problem is there are some talks about replacing Lady Joyce with a more capable candidate and by capable they obviously mean by a man <laughs> yes, they want to replace her the men. A cousin, maybe. Who knows? The Council of Four has their eyes on her. They're waiting for her to make one mistake, one mishap, one wrong step, and they kick her out. <laughs> She's walking on a tightrope. Well, yeah. I hear a lot of things. I know a lot of things. So, Lady Joyce better be careful. Oh, they're out together. Let's see. Nowadays, the inn is completely empty by night. I mean, look, look around. There's no one. And full by day. Crowded. I swear. Well, it used to be the complete opposite. And that's because people are running away from the coast. Well, yeah, they want to be more inland. With all the selkie attacks, people, well, they don't want to trade at sea. They don't even want to get on a ship. So, they move. And well, because most of the knights are by the coast to, you know, protect the ships. Well, Escade has become pretty dangerous at night. So, people don't want to go. 
I mean, all in all, it's kind of good for business because we have so many people during the day. But, you know, good for business, bad for the soul. But what are you doing in this gate? In truth, you want to become a Crimson Knight. <laughs> That's really exciting. Yeah, well, actually, see that man? In the dark corner, that man, well, <laughs> he's a crimson knight. Yes, we call him the voiceless knight. Oh, no, he's talking to him. He won't answer. Like his name says, he doesn't speak. And well, rumor has it that who discovers the true name of the voiceless knight will be cursed with selkism. The peddlers play that game every night. <sighs> but the Crimson Knights, what a life they lead. I don't envy them. They only come here to drink their sorrow and then they go next door to the brothel. <sighs> the order is not what it used to be. I mean, sure, Sir Galex is nice and all, but um, he's getting old. And, well, the days of the war are long gone. Well, yeah, Sir Galex Drain is just an old man with a shiny name in an empty castle. He doesn't even come to Westgate anymore. I mean, he's supposed to be the leader of the order of the Crimson Knight of the Crimson Knights, but he doesn't even come anymore. He used to come to the inn almost every night and tell us stories about the War of Six when he fought off invaders in the White Brook Mountains. Oh, and also the Civil War. He used to tell us tales about when he defended the late king with a single dagger against hundreds of traitors. It was so exciting. But, you know, he doesn't come to the inn anymore. He doesn't even come to Eskate anymore. He stays in his castle. Does he even take care of his own guild? I wonder. Yeah. He stays in his castle, and his hair becomes grey, and his stories become old. The order needs young blood. They need passionate young lads like yourself. But are you perhaps tired because you keep yawning? Would you like to spend the night at the inn, perhaps? Um, we don't have any more rooms available. You can sleep at the stable with the beast. It's not fancy, but the beast will keep you warm. And, I mean, at this time of night, you won't find anything better in SK. So, should we do this? Alright, it's settled then. I'll go get you some fresh sheets. She likes her great tea. 
Please, do sit down, young man. Tally spoke highly of you, and it is my honour to have you in my house today. I am Lady Joyce Eitel of Eskate, and, well, it is my duty to write introductory letters to the young men who wish to join the Order. The Crimson Knights, Tally told me of your desolated circumstances and I was quite sad upon hearing your father's death as you surely know already since I am the object of most gossips in Escade I myself have recently lost my father so I am more than sympathetic to your cause. I understand what it feels like to lose a loved one. Now, I understand you wish to avenge your father's death um, by becoming a knight and fight the Selkies who struck him down. Is that If that is so, allow me to give you some wise advice. Seeing the Selkies are known to be a peaceful race, and well, they have been at peace with us for two centuries, I believe. So it is quite odd. Way right now and I believe you should not use the crime of a few to pass judgment on the many. Now keep in mind that there are many, 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 many Selkies living inland. Um, for example, at the city of Market, Elian, which I believe, because Tally told me so, is located near your village. Yes, uh, which village? Well, Elian is the proof of that assimilation. The Selkies work, live together with the humans and they are at peace. They trade and they sell together. And, well, we have never had any problem until the recent attacks. So, it is quite odd that things are happening like that now. Yes, it is true that they do not answer to King Persim as they have their own king under the sea, yet never have they shown mm, greed or envy over our good. I just don't understand what good would there be if they declared war on us, I suppose the numbers are in our favour. Everyone knows that, and who would side with them? No one. Well, perhaps Lord Jova of Deaton, as he is half sulky after all. But what is one house against a united nation? No, no, no. The kingdom. Well win this war for sure. So I don't know why the Selkies are acting up recently. What I do want to tell you, young one, is I understand your motivations and your anger, your pain, your thirst for justice. Though remember that things are not always what they appear to be and I do not think you should resent the Selkies for tragedy that happened to your family. Ask yourself the right question. Who is truly benefiting from these attacks? The Selkies, who are already a persecuted minority by some human supremacist, or the merchants who lost their trade? No, no, no. It is a mystery. 
I'll admit. And well, even if this attack or these attacks were indeed committed out of pure hatred and greed, well, I do not think that we should hate the Selkies as a whole. A degree of moderation is needed in such situation. We should definitely think a bit more before passing judgment on their race as a whole, if you know what I mean. Now be at peace, for I have already written your letter of introduction to the king. I will give you this letter as I am one of the nobles of Andata. I hold the power to introducing you to the king as my candidate. So you do not disappoint me, otherwise shame would be brought to the Edel House of Escape. Now, once you have met the king, if he gives you his permission, you will be able to go to Chateau Lens and meet the head of the order, Sir Kilkstrain. Well, yes, your voyage is not going to stop after you reached the Ardell Castle. The king alone cannot make you a knight. You, of course, have to meet Sir Gullickstrain as he is the head of the Crimson Knights. Now, I will ask for something in return. Oh, think of it as a simple act of kindness for the common people of Esgate. Seeing ever since the attacks started, Crimson Knights have been, well, appointed to the coast in order to help the merchant defend their ships and, well, as a result, no night patrols escape anymore. So, our streets have become more and more dangerous. Escape has become the, well, lair of rogues and thieves. The common people of Escape are quite frightened. They do not want to venture themselves in the streets after the sun has come down. So, well, I'm desperately in need of more knights to defend the streets of my city. Now, I know for a fact that some knights are still living at Chateau Lens to keep Sir Gillick's train company that is their sole purpose. I'm sure that Sir Gillick can spare us some nights. Um, I fear that Esgate is doomed if the crime wave is not properly managed. And only the king has the power to put a stop to it. I have written some letters to Sir Gillick's train. Either they have not reached him already, which I find quite hard to believe, or he refuses to, well, respond. Now, the reason why I cannot send a runner to carry this quite important letter is because I cannot trust anyone at the moment. Many are just waiting in the shadow to, well, jump at my throat. They're waiting for one, one messed up. Well, it will be the end of me. I cannot speak for the courtier. I cannot speak for anyone. A letter is easily lost and a pigeon is easily shot down by a keen archer. Now, I need you to personally bring this second letter to the king, hand to hand. And this is the letter of introduction I have already written for you, which I hopefully will make you a crimson knight. Please take good care of them and bring them safely to the citadel of Mera. It is a long ride to the capital. Have you got a horse? No? Oh, good God. Well, I will provide you with one of my best horses. You will go see Mace, the stable master, and he will, well, give you one of my stallions. Thank you for coming to my humble house. 
I hope that we can be mm, helpful to each other. Now, be on your way, young man. My hearing is soon and I must prepare.